Hello everyone, this is Teacher V and welcome back here in my channel. Itutuloy natin yung lesson about Law of Cosines. Ito ay part 2 na dahil meron na akong part 1 na nagawa at ilalagay ko sa description box below yung link para kung hindi mo pa manapapanood, pwede mo siyang i-check. At nasa week 7 pa rin tayo. Konting-konti na lang, matatapos na natin yung school year. Diba? Nagawa mo at nakaya mo, kaya ituloy mo lang. Kasi konting-konti na lang, matatapos na natin ang grade 9. At next year, mag-grade na na kayo. Okay, now let's start answering. So, answer the following accordingly. Describe the type of problems that require the law of cosines. As I've said on my previous videos, hindi po pwedeng lahat ng oblique triangles ay gagamitan mo ng law of cosines. So, depende pa rin sa given measurements ng triangle. At ginagamit lang natin ang law of cosines if we have or given yung two sides and included angle or yung sas. Or ito yung pangalawang case kapag three sides yung given or SSS. Again, sas and SSS lang ang pwede gamitan ng law of cosines. Next question, can the law of cosines be used to solve any triangle? For which two angles and side are known? Dalawang angles and isang side ang given. Of course, hindi. Okay? Hindi natin pwedeng gamitin ang law of cosine. Katulad nga na banggit ko kanina, dalawang case lang. SAS, side, angle side, or SSS ang pupwede sa law of cosine. So, law of cosine can be used for an oblique triangles if the two sides and included angle are given or if all the three sides are given. If two angles and a side are given, you need to use the law of sines. So, pag two angles and one side, law of sines ang gagamitin natin. Okay? Next, can you cite real life application of law of cosines? Describe how you can apply the law of cosines in that situation. Give at least two situations. So, ito yung sample natin na gagamitan ng Law of cosines. So, solar panel with a width of 1.2 meters is positioned on a flat roof. So as shown in the figure, what is the angle of elevation of the solar panel? Ayan yung solar panel. Yung tinatanong is yung angle of elevation and meron tayong given measurement na 1.2. Okay, yung position ng ating solar panel. Okay, and then... Ang question, ano yung angle of elevation? So, makikita ninyo, given yung tatlong side dito sa figure, so SSS to, kaya pwede natin gamitan to ng law of cosines. Another problem na pwede natin gamitin ng law of cosines is this, a rhombus has side lengths of 25 inches. The diagonal opposite the obtuse angles is 45 inches. What is the measure of its obtuse angle to the nearest degree? So, this is a rhombus and we all know that rhombus has equal sides. Kaya kung meron tayong 25 inches dito, 25 inches na rin yung isa pang side niya. At yung ating diagonal ay may given na 45 inches. At aalamin natin yung measurement ng angle natin, which is yung obtuse angle or yung angle natin here. So, gamit ang law of cosines, masasolve natin to at you can see na ang given dito is tatlong side. So, side, side, side. Kaya pwedeng pwede na gamitin natin ang law of cosines. Okay, now let's solve the following tri triangles and round to the nearest tenth. When we say tenth, one decimal place lang. Given na yung angle natin dito, yung angle C is 135, yung side B is 8, and yung side A is 5. Ang question, ano ang sukat ng angle A, angle B, and yung side C? Kunin muna natin yung C. And to solve for C, let's use the formula for the law of cosine para sa C squared. We have A squared plus B squared minus 2AB times cosine C. Substitute lang natin yung A and B and yung C na angle. So A is 5, B is 8, then minus natin sa 2 times yung AB, so 5 times 8, then cosine yung angle natin, 135. So, 5 times 8 is 40 times 2, that is 80. Then here, is squared mo lang, 5 squared is 25, 8 squared is 64. And we have 80 cosines 135. Ito yung unahin muna natin. So, pindutin natin sa calculator yung 80 times cosine 135. And ito yung lalabas dyan, negative 56.5685 and so on, ayan. And ito, i-add lang natin. 25 plus 64, the answer is 89. 
So, 89 minus natin dun sa lumabas na 80 cosine 135, ang lalabas dyan is 145. And square it natin, both sides, para makancel yung squared, kasi C ang kailangan lang natin makuha. So, square it mo yung 145, ang answer dito ay 12.1. So, 1 decimal place lang, kaya 0.1 lang ang ilalagay natin. Ang C natin is 12.1. Next, let's solve for angle B. Ang gagamitin naman natin para masolve ang angle B is yung law of sines. So, sine B over B is equal to sine C over C. Substitute natin. Yung angle B is unknown, kaya sine B lang. Lagi natin here. And then yung B, okay, ito yung B natin, 8, is equal to sine C. So, yung angle C is 135 over yung C natin. And na-compute kanina, 12.1. Cross multiply lang natin. That's why we have 12.1 times sine B is equal to sine 135 times 8. Then divide natin both sides sa 12.1 para ma-cancel. Maiwan yung sine B. Okay. And pag pinindot natin sa calculator itong sine 135 times 8, then divide by 12.1, ito yung lalabas na answer. And again, angle ang kinukuha natin dito. Kaya kailangan natin gamitan yung shift or second function sa inyong mga calculator. Kailangan, ang nakalagay dyan is sine raised to negative 1. So, press sine raised to negative 1, or shift, then press yung sine on your calculator para sa angles. At ang lalabas nga dyan ay 27.9 degrees. Ang angle B natin is 27.9 degrees. Paano naman ang angle A? So, madali na lang to kasi alam naman natin na ang total sum ng interior angles ng triangle natin is 180. Kaya i-add natin yung dalawang angles, tapos i-minus sa 180. So, angle A plus 27.9 plus 135 is equal to 180. Kaya i-add lang natin yan, yung 27.9 plus 135, the answer is 162.9. Then, yung 162.9 i-minus mo sa 180. Ang sagot or angle na mabubuo natin is 17.1. Angle A is 17.1. Okay, kompleto na yung angles natin. And at the same time, kompleto na rin yung measurement na ating mga sides. Next triangle natin, ito yung given. And we're going to use the law of cosines to find the angle opposite the longest side. Yun yung unahin natin is all. The longest side here is yung 7. Okay, yung B. Yung B natin is 7. Kaya ito yung isusolve natin, yung angle na opposite sa kanya, which is angle B. So, kukunin natin yung angle B muna, then susundon natin yung angle C or angle A. Ito ay side, side, side. Makikita nyo, given na yung tatlong sides. Okay, so solve for angle B. So, we have cosine B is equal to A squared plus C squared minus B squared over 2 times AC. So, ang A natin is yung 4 then, i-squared natin yan. Then, yung C, 5. 5 squared minus yung B natin is 7. So, 7 squared over 2 times yung A, 4 times yung C, 5. So, 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. 7 squared is 49. 2 times 4 is 8 times 5, 40. I-add natin to 16 plus 25. Then, minus 49. The answer is negative 8 over 40. At pag dinibide natin yan, ito yung lalabas, negative 0.2. This is an angle. Yung kinukuha natin is angle. Kaya kailangan gagamitan natin ulit ng second function shift or shift sa inyong mga cellphone or scientific calculator. So, ipipress natin yung cosine raised to negative 1 or yung shift, then yung cos sa calculator para makuha ang angles. At ang lalabas nga na answer dyan is 101.5. Ang angle B natin is 101.5. Next, kukunin naman natin yung angle C. And we're going to use law of sines to find either of the two remaining acute angles. So, kunin nga natin yung angle C at law of sine naman ang gagamitin natin. Kaya, we will use sine B over B is equal to sine C over C. So, total, meron naman na tayong nakuha na angle B. So, sine B is sine 101.5 over yung B natin na 7 is equal to sine C over itong C na 5. Cross multiply natin, we have 5 times sine 101.5 is equal to sine C times 7. 
Then divide natin both sides sa 7. Ang dahilan para makancel yung 7, nakatabi nitong sign C. Okay, makakancel na yan. And pindutin na sa ating scientific calculator yung 5. Then times natin sa sign 101.5. Then divide sa 7. Ang lalabas dyan na answer is this. At again, angle pa rin ang kinukuha natin dito. Kaya kailangan kunin natin yung angle or ipipress natin yung sine raised to negative 1 or yung shift, then yung sine sa inyong scientific calculators para makuha nyo yung angle. At pag pinindot nyo yan, ito na yung lalabas para sa ating angle. 44.4 degrees. Okay, so ang ating angle C is 44.4 degrees. And of course, Kulang na lang yung angle A. Para makuha natin ang angle A, i-add natin yung dalawang angles na nakuha natin, then minus sa 180. So, 101.5 plus 44.4, the answer is 145.9. Yung 145.9, i-minus natin sa 180 to get the angle A. At ang lalabas dyan is 34.1. So, kompleto na yung ating triangles. Next triangle natin, we have this. Given yung dalawang sides, 9 and 9, o oh, pareho silang 9. And merong isang given na angle, yung angle C, which is yung 120. Kunin natin yung side C. Ang formula natin na gagamitin is yung law of cosine sa C squared. So, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB times cosine C. Substitute lang natin, 9 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 9 times 9. Then, cosine, 120. So, 81 plus 81 minus, okay, nakuha yung 162 kasi 9 times 9 is 81. Then, 81 times 2, 162. Cosine, 120. So, isolve natin or multiply yung 162 sa cosine, 120. And then, ito naman, i-add natin, 81 plus 81. So, the answer is 162 minus negative 81. Then simplify, we have 243 and i-square it natin sa both sides para maanggal ang squared, makuha natin ang C. At ang square root ng 243 is 15.6. Meaning to say, yung side C is equal to 15.6. Next naman natin kukunin is yung angle B. And we're going to use the law of sines to find the angle opposite the shorter of the two given sides. The angle is always acute. So, ano yung mas shorter? Anyway, pareho lang naman sila. So, kahit ano na lang dyan ang sunod yung isolve. Pero ako, ang gagamitin ko na lang is yung angle B. So, isosolve natin yung angle B. So, sine B over B is equal to sine C. So, sine B over 9 is equal to sine 120 over yung C na nakuha natin na 15.6. Then, cross, multiply. 15.6 times sine B is equal to sine 120 times 9. Now, divide natin both sides sa 15.6 para makancel at naiwan yung sine B. And then, pindutin na sa ating calculator yung sine 120 times 9 divide by 15.6. Ang lalabas na answer dyan is this. At katulad din ginawa natin sa mga nauna, kailangan natin i-press yung sine raised to negative 1 or yung shift, then yung sine sa inyong calculator para sa angle. Ang alabas na sagot is 30. Ang angle B is 30. At madali na lang ang angle A kasi meron na tayong angle B. So para makuha natin, ang angle A, we will add 120 and 30, then i-minus sa 180. Ang sagot is also 30. So ang angle A ay 30. And kompleto na yung ating triangle, yung measurement niya. Next, draw triangles given the indicated measures below and solve for the missing part using the law of cosines. Round the answers to the nearest tenth. So for number one, given yung isang angle, then dalawang sides. So ito yan, yung angle A is 46. Yung katapat niya, yun yung side A. And then yung C is 9. So side C is 9. At ang katapat niyang angle is itong C. And then yung B is 11. Then, yung katapat yung angle, ito yung angle B. Next, sa number 2, given yung tatlong sides. So, A, B, C is given. A is 8. So, ang katapat yung angle is itong angle na to. Kaya, ito yung angle A. Then, yung B is 10. So, ang katapat yung angle is to Kaya, angle B. 
And here, angle C. Yan naman yung unknown or gagamitin natin. Ayan naman yung unknown or hahanapin natin. At yung process is katulad lang din ng mga pinakita ko kanina sa mga nauna nating examples. Kaya kayang-kaya nyo na itong gawin. Okay, so that's it. I hope na may natutunan ka kay Teacher B. At kung meron kang natutunan, pwede mo i-like ang video na to at mag-iwan ng message kay Teacher B kung may mga questions ka pa na gusto mong matutunan related sa topic natin today. Don't forget to follow me also on my Facebook page, VTeach Channel. At kita-kita tayo ulit sa susunod, week 8 na tayo. Last lesson na yun, kaya see you again and goodbye!